we were very excited as you were coming in. Again, we do have an audience Q&A mic. We want to get to as many audience questions as possible, so please keep it to one question per person and no requests. All right, let's do it. Please welcome to the stage first, give it up for Jamie Kennedy! Got a ball going as we bring up on the stage, Skate Orange! All right, next up, Fan Expo Denver, please welcome Matthew Lillard! And last but certainly not least, please welcome Sydney Prescott herself, Nat Campbell! professional camera on stage. <laughs> we have a ton of people still trickling in. Thank you all for being here. Thank you. Uh, give it up one more time for them on uh, Fan Expo Denver. Um, we've got a ton of questions uh, in the audience. We want to get to them as soon as possible, because that's what this is about. It's about the fans uh, asking their questions. Uh, but I just wanted to kick things off. Uh, 1996 was an amazing year for film in general. We had films like Twister, Mission Impossible, The Rock, Ruby You might have heard of another film called The Craft that came out that year. And it was the reimagining and the rediscovery of the horror franchise with everyone's favorite Scream film. Get up for Scream! We're six films in. The fans are still just ravenous uh, for this franchise. I'd just love to kick things off before we go to the fans and talk, go down the line and just talk a little bit about what it means to be a part of this and what it feels like to have the fans uh, come and tell you how important this horror franchise was to them. Yeah, we'll start with you, Jim. Uh, it's incredible. I think uh, we hit lightning in a bottle when we made the movie. We were just a little movie and we just thought, well, maybe we can do good on video. <laughs> and uh, so much to say, but it's just incredible. And it was just, we just hit lightning in a bottle and well, here we are 27 years later. It's incredible. Uh, yeah, it's kind of, certainly in the moment, no, none of us could process that this would ever exist, uh, that people would still be involved, you know, into this series. And, uh, you know, we were just a bunch of kids who got together to do what we love to do. And, and, and I think that's the power of, you know, finding what it is you love to do. And you never know what will happen with it. And certainly, I could never predict this. So, yeah. thank you all. Thank you, each and every one. Yes. Oh my gosh, everybody, from behind the curtains, look how many is it's a surprise! Oh. 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 Rose, oh my gosh, thank you for joining us. Uh, Rose has a solo panel uh, later at 2 p.m., so definitely check that out. But, uh, oh my gosh, thank you for joining us on stage. We love it. Hi, everybody. <laughs> Scream forever, literally. This is amazing. I just wanted to come and say that Tatum lives, and I love you all. <laughs> Fabulous, beautiful panel. Fans, don't forget, uh, Rose uh, will be at her table all day and is also doing a solo panel, so for all you Rose McGowan fans and those who have any Charm fans in the building out there, we're going to have Definitely check out uh, 2 p.m. or right over uh, next door. Uh, Matt, talk about the legacy and, uh, you know, just what this franchise means to you. <laughs> uh, first of all, it's very humbling that so many people showed up, so thank you. <laughs> sort of amazed yeah. and honored. Um, we, we were making a horror movie with Wes Craven who hadn't made a good horror movie in a long time. So in the, in God bless his soul, we love him. 
But in the moment, it did. It was nothing special. It's not until now that you recognize that you were in the middle of something. So for us, it was just one of the greatest times we've ever had working, um, and the results are baffling to us in a way um, because nobody ever saw it coming. But every single time we get these opportunities to interact, it is humbling. So we are grateful you guys are here. Thank you. Surprises that we didn't plan ahead of time at all. Wow! <laughs> now, I, I only have two things to say. Yeah, One, tell us. 27 years ago, 28 years ago, I had lunch, uh, sushi lunch, with Wes Craven, who wore tweed, and you saw <laughs> you were talking to an English professor. And he said, I have a small part in my movie, would you do it? I said, of course I would. And then it turned out to be this incredible uh, sociological event. And I want to just say, I have not seen these people for 27 years. We saw each other at another Comic-Con and it was like we have been together forever. They are everything you imagine they are, they are. And that is just the truth. There is no hyperbole in that. And the second thing is, I was there and I had, you know, was, um, uh, and then I was told they're not going to put my name on the movie because I played the Fonz and he was going to throw the balance of the horror off. <laughs> so I went, okay, and we're not going to be on the one sheet. We will not be on the, uh, on the, the commercial um, poster. I won't be there either. I went, okay. And then they previewed the movie and my character walked on screen and I got applause. And the same people who said, go home, said, excuse me, would you do press for the movie? You never know in our business. Have the greatest summer. Be careful and take good care of each other. And I am so proud to be a member of your family. Here, final girl of all time. Here. <laughs> to be up there, that man, you know, just one of those top characters. What does that, how does that make you feel? And then, Matt, I'm going to let you take it away with the audience questions. I thought you were actually talking to Matt when you said that. <laughs> <laughs> Matt, you the best final girl is awesome. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. Henry, Henry is such a I gem. Yes. I mean, isn't he just the most magical? <laughs> <laughs> Um, these movies changed my life, made my life, changed my life. Um, you know, as these guys said, just we had no, there was no way to have any idea. You would never, you just, how often does this happen that you get to make this many movies and have them be successful and more importantly loved, you know? Um, yeah, I cannot, I can't believe I'm sitting in front of you guys. I feel that way every time we have an audience like this and whenever I get to see these guys and whenever anyone comes up to me and tells me that Sydney saved them or that these movies helped them in some way, it's just tremendous. Um, there's no way to really fathom the reach that it's had. Um, and I'm so, so, so grateful and so grateful to you all and to you guys. I love you. Thank you. 
grateful for you all being here. Let's give it up for the cast and screen, everybody. All right. I think we have a lot lined up at the center here. People are lined up, so why don't you go ahead and take the first question. All right, let's hear it. Okay. Um, do you guys have advice for young people who are trying to get into the world of acting? Oh, that's a million things. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I, several things, and I'm sure everybody could add more to it, but um, never quit. Never quit living your dream. Never quit believing in yourself. Never let Hollywood be the standard for success in your mind. Finding what you love to do is the success. So congratulate yourself on that, and then continue to grow as a person and as an artist, and express yourself, yourself. Um, don't follow anybody else. Be you, and I guarantee you that you will find success in more ways than you can imagine. I like all the answers. Awesome. Tell us your first name and your question. You have a small, you have the ghost face mask on the second ago. My name is Saibu, and I've seen every single screen movie. <laughs> Hold on. Hold on. Where are your parents? I know. <laughs> uh, Child Protective Services? <laughs> Like five. <laughs> so I'd like to know what's your favorite scary movie. Oh. <laughs> um, I I love a movie called The Changeling with George C. Scott. Yeah. Terrifying, terrifying. How how old are you, Zyla? Eleven. Oh. Um. I know. I'm short. No. <laughs> Tyler, stop being funnier than me, all right? <laughs> Listen, there's movies out there called Barney. I mean, I would say, um, Zyla, I'm just gonna say Showgirls. Absolutely. Right there. Go watch that. Excuse me, Barry. Uh, I love The Exorcism of Emily Rose. <laughs> Hereditary. I, we, we don't have somewhere. Do you have a favorite? <laughs> I came back to the stage because there's so many people. <laughs> I usually like roaming around, but they try to touch you. And then like, I want to come back to the stage. My <laughs> uh, right favorite horror movie is Scream. <laughs> so whoever that, um, can I just say, ski and. Uh, you did a great job asking that question. Um, to the young person that just said, what do you do as an actor? Can I just chime in on that? So here's what I want to say, wherever you are. Look, if you, if, yeah, I see you, okay, hi. Look, here's the deal. Any, there are lots of people in this room, and some people are outside the norm, that don't like sort of fit in the middle of high school, and don't walk the way other people walk through life, right? And so some of those people are actors and artists and dancers and singers and, I don't know, whatever you do that's not normal, those people that don't play football. <laughs> the most important thing is you find your people and do your shit. That's the most important thing, right? Do not ever worry about success. Just follow passion. I don't give a shit what it is. Go do your thing, and you will find your way to Hollywood or wherever it's gonna be. But find what you love to do and fly that flag, period. All right? Sorry. I'm sorry. I usually go and like have people ask questions, but there's so many people I go. I'm gonna go sit down. <laughs> so go ahead, next question. We say we say to see the VIP section. Yes. Yeah, tell us your name and your first uh, your question. Hi guys, um, I'm Ali, a big fan. Um, so, you guys are arguably a part of one of the biggest casts for any horror movie ever. And obviously, the films that have followed have kind of followed a similar formula, you know, following just commentary on horror movies as a whole. But in the first movie, I'm wondering if you guys knew, spoiler alert, if any of you haven't seen this movie, why are you even here? But, did you guys know 
that Billy Loomis and Stu Maker were going to be the killers going in, or was that kept in the dark for you guys as well? I knew. <laughs> I didn't know, but I think some cast were kept in the dark. Is that right? Uh, we knew. I, you guys knew. Yeah, maybe, maybe some were. Yeah, we, we knew. But the, Jamie's you know, always in the dark. Yeah. <laughs> what? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I love being in I Know You Did Last Summer. <laughs> That's his panel? Uh, no, we knew in the first one that they were, and I'll let these guys answer, but the second one, is where we didn't get a lot of details. That's right, that's right. I forgot about this. It's the second one, not everybody knew. Very cool. All right, thank, thank you very much. Let's hear it. Yeah. Woo! That was the first thing question. Hi, I'm Jake. And speaking of the second movie, my question is pretty much for anyone. But with the second movie, production was incredibly quick, several script rewrites. Was there ever a moment where you doubted Wes Craven or Kevin Williamson during those moments? Never. 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 never doubted those guys. Ever. That, that was never doubted. Um, the script came on and the next thing you know, we were making a sub-movie called Stab. And in Stab, Luke Wilson was like, I'm gonna play Ski. And Heather Graham was in it and, I mean, it was, we had like a cast within a cast within a cast. It was incredible. And like, the minute we got greenlit, you were on the cover of Rolling Stone. Is that right? Yeah. <laughs> you don't remember? I knew. I, that was the timing. That's great. Okay, yeah. I forgot that was you, you guys crazy. Were, um, it was insane. You guys were dead. But anyway, let's <laughs> go. Yeah, next I question. <laughs> What's your problem, bro? <laughs> shout out to uh, Wes Craven, obviously the filmmaking genius, but shout out to Kevin Williamson, the writer of the Hollywood Incredible. Films. <laughs> Incredible. Incredible. <laughs> They were both, they're both incredibly, you know, clever. And sure, these films are complicated to get right. Mm -hmm. And that doesn't mean that there wasn't doubt within them of like, you know, having to question and go over things and do rewrites and stuff. But we didn't, I certainly didn't doubt that they wouldn't, that they would get it. You know what I mean? It's just, it's a process, especially when it's a whodunit. Yeah, it takes a minute. Awesome, thank you. Thank you for your question. Sort of. That was the last guy I just <laughs> um, My name's Allie. I've met all of you already, so it's nice to see you again. But um, my question is because, like, you guys have thrown around a lot. Uh, you guys get manhandled a lot. And um, we were watching the movie last night, and, like, the scene where Sydney stabs Billy in the chest with an umbrella. Ow. <laughs> so I was just wondering if any of the injuries that you've got, like, have you gotten hurt on set? And if so, what was the worst injury that you've gotten? on the set of Scream, or any movie, but more certainly Scream. I feel like I hurt myself. <laughs> it was never other people, it was my enthusiasm. <laughs> um, I think sometimes I would be a bit too much go-getter, um, and I could have held back on a few things, but nothing terrible. Just Matt, what about I, the scene between, obviously, Billy and Stu, that final iconic scene, one of the best scenes in horror movie history, am I right? Uh, where we're seeing them reveal themselves as the killers. There's a lot of stabbing going back and forth, the shooting. Any, any sort of alternations there? I, I know what Matt's going to say. The phone really hurt, you know, it really hurt to get hit by the phone. <laughs> that was totally not cool. <laughs> Yeah, it's funny. So that whole scene, I think, is uh, a testament to, obviously, yeah. Wes and to Kevin. But I, I want to say that the, 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 we were, again, young kids hurling energy at 18 pages of dialogue, or 20 pages of dialogue. And there were night when we would shoot, um, you know, 6 p.m. to like 6 in the morning every single night for like three weeks. And at some point, when you're in that kind of energy for that long, you start to lose your mind a little. And so there are moments in that thing where I have these distinct memories of us, the three of us, sitting in like the living room against the wall. And this is before cell phones, just so we're clear. <laughs> that's how old this movie is. Um, they actually talk to each other. That's super weird. Yeah, we would sit there and talk to each other. But all three of us had blood covering our bodies. And literally, we would all sit there and just sticky 
your fingers would be like sticking and you'd be playing with the stickiness. And I'd look at them and I'd be like, look, and then do the same shit. Uh, and that's a true story. And it, yeah, that, so really what got hurt was our minds. <laughs> Amazing. Thank you for your question. Let's hear it for the number one. Okay, tell us your name and your question. Um, I'm Kennedy. Um, so I love Great Scream. name. <laughs> so I love horror movies in the Scream franchise, but how I got into horror movies or scary stuff was Scooby Doo. And so for um, <laughs> impact in my life and I was wondering um, for Matthew what was it like being on the set for Scooby-Doo like for the live action because that was a big impact for me when I was younger <laughs> you are adorable <laughs> he wants to go about you so bad um, but there's so many people um, uh, first of all thank you for your question um, so that was a very difficult journey because you're taking a two-dimensional character that everyone knows, that I grew up with, and trying to make it into a three-dimensional real person. And your best friend in the movie isn't there ever. He's never there. <laughs> <laughs> he just never shows up. Um, but I was really lucky that there was a, a man, um, uh, oh God, it's gonna drive me crazy. Uh, There's a man in Australia who is the off, camera voice, who was Neil Fanning, thank God, who was the off-camera voice, and he was with me first and second movie. Um, and that movie, for me, for a long time, hung on me like this. I was kind of embarrassed about the film. It did great, the first one was great, the second one was like, ah, and I didn't work the for a The second one was the one I always watched. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, uh, I was a fan of everything. Yes. I wasn't a big fan of the first one. <laughs> uh, fair enough, fair enough. <laughs> I didn't know this was Charlie Rose. I didn't know. Yeah. Um, she came listen, with the live action Yelp. The, 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 <laughs> the best part is, you know, I was about to say, the best part about that movie and that franchise is that the legacy of that part for me has given me purpose as my career goes on. As I'm waning and getting older and my time in this industry is, is coming relatively to an end. There's, oh stop, I'm gonna die, it's gonna happen. I just hope I make like CNN, that's all I want. Today that guy from that thing died. Um, uh, from Scooby Doo 2. Yeah. Uh, but listen, the, the great thing about that for me is that this moment right here is so validating for my entire life is that you get to hold space for a character that means something to other people. The same thing that, that uh, Nev just said, is that we cherish doing something that resonates with people. I have lots of movies that are really terrible that nobody gives a shit about. <laughs> but to have one that you come up and, and mention today is really profoundly, um, gratifying in my life, so thank you. We're seeing this, uh, all of us, we're seeing this younger generation now being uh, introduced to the films of Scream. Literally in the movies, we're getting the next generation. You got to return to it. What is it like seeing like the new generation and then actually being a part of that storytelling uh, in the newer films? Uh, I mean, it's, first of all, it's, uh, it was, an honor to be asked to, to uh, be a small part of it, um, to be any part of it. Um, you know, I, I feel like the group that took over, Wes would be really proud, and I'm sure Nev could speak to that more than I could, having spent more time with them on set than I did in, in five, but I, I feel like they, they were really focused on honoring Wes and the, you know, the franchise as a whole, and I think they did a great job at it. I, th I think they brought it uh, there's an excitement to it, you know, when I watched it for the first time. Um, it's, it's relevant, yeah. and it's now, and yet it still harkens back to what the story is and what the legacy of the story is. Um, I, I think they picked a great group of people to tell it. Um, it's wild because Mason Gooding, I worked with his dad, Cuba Gooding, a couple times, so it's wild to, you know, be that old and still work. <laughs> 
But I, I think I think the franchise is in great hands, and uh, and you know I uh, I was very honored to be a part of it. Um, however little that was, it was it was fun. I mean, I unfortunately didn't get a lot of time on set, and COVID was you know when we were shooting the fifth one, so we didn't really get to you know there wasn't I got to work with Melissa, and that was kind of it. And then the second six. I, there was no one on set with me, not because of COVID, it was just the way it was, the green screen and all that stuff. You know, I was alone with it. But um, again, just honored to be asked to be a part of it. Awesome. Well, we're happy to have you back. And uh, yeah, for being with us for so long. Awesome. Let's go to the next question. Tell us your name and your question. Hey, hi, uh, I'm Lily. Um, first of all, it's awesome to be able to talk to literal legends. Hey. <laughs> Where are they? <laughs> Henry <laughs> left. <laughs> left. Yeah. <laughs> Thank and you. Also, Nev, you're like my literal hero, so it's, it's nice to see you in person. Like, this is blowing my mind right now. Um, and then my question for all of you is, what was your favorite scene or line from the first Scream movie that you did? Ooh. I, you know, it wasn't necessarily, I mean, for me, one that I think, um, and it's probably the one I guess get asked to sign the most, but to me has, seems to have the most relevance psychologically in, in my life and in probably a lot of people's lives and is we all go a little mad sometimes. Because, <laughs> because we do, we do. And I think you gotta allow that in yourselves, but that, that one for me. Yep. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> that would be hard. I've done a lot of these. Um, What's your the favorite first? of all of them? My favorite line of all of them? Of all of the screens. I'm Sydney fucking Prescott, yeah. of course I have a different yeah. 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 um, I, well, look, I like, I re improv stuff in that last piece that yeah. I like, so um, I think the, where my mom and dad are gonna be so mad at me. <laughs> This sweet little moment where you're laughing at the end of, of a horrific movie. Um, so it was fun. That was my Love it. Jamie. So it's a lot, because we have so ones we like. I probably think mine was, uh, I was never so happy to be a virgin. Do <laughs> <laughs> you have a favorite rule? Do you have, you have a lot of horror movie rules? Well, with that rule being said, yeah. it's weird because I died in the second movie, tragically, and I don't remember getting any sex. So, something went on, I don't know where. Um, I don't know, you know, what, you know what's amazing about you guys is, is that you guys teach me and all of us new stuff that we don't even remember about the film. So somebody said when I was talking on the phone or with David, there was a fourth rule and scream too, and I don't know what it is. And somebody came up to me at the last convention and said the fourth rule is never kill the voice of the audience. And I was so touched. Anyway, sorry guys, I'm available for birthday parties. <laughs> we really took a turn, it got too serious. Thank you so much for your question. Thank Big you. Tell us your name and your question. <laughs> uh, hi. <laughs> Take your time. You're doing great. You're doing great. Hi. My name is Kyla, and I have a question for Matthew. Did Ski ever apologize to you? <laughs> I'm so glad you asked that question. <laughs> I gotta go to the bathroom. I, I just want to say thank you so much. No, you know what? He never did. Uh, no. Um, Matt, help me. Matt? Matt? What's key? I, I know it's been a while. And, oh, oh, hey, hey, hey. Matt? Matt? Matt no. I'm getting colder. Uh, I just would like to apologize for one thing. Just something I did like 27 years ago. 
honey. I, I was upset in the moment. I was, I, don't upset. I was upset in the moment. I was lost in the moment. Yeah. I'm sorry. I'm really sorry. We, uh, somebody called us the first the husbands of horror. Husbands of horror. <laughs> Our hugs are not sideways in private. <laughs> it finally happened, and it was thanks to Kyla. Thank you, Kyla. Thank you. Big round of applause for Kyla, everybody. <laughs> Tell us your first name and your question. Um, I'm Alex. Um, if you could pick one character from any Scream movie, and it can't be your own, to save, who would you pick? To save? Bro! <laughs> oh, it can't be our own? No, we have to save. Hmm. Hmm. I would, I mean, I, I would save Henry Winkler, obviously. Yeah. <laughs> That's, like, That's why Wait, wait, let me apologize. Let me apologize. Jamie is sitting, Jamie is sitting right there. <laughs> Jamie is sitting right there. He's the voice of the audience. Henry had all those great roles. <laughs> I would say Jamie Kennedy. Uh, I don't remember his character's name. <laughs> I got it here. Red, red. Oh, Randy, oh, Randy. I would say, I actually think that Jamie is a gift. Yeah. He is. In that movie, he's lovely. I think that if you get him in this situation, we could all be quiet for two hours and he would make you laugh every single time. He is an endearing, lovely man. Stop it. Somebody else on stage. I have a husband. I have a husband. Uh, who would I save? That's hard to ask. <laughs> I'm right here. You don't have to say I, it. You know why? You don't have to say yeah, it. You know why? Because I'm still alive. Ah! He's still alive. That's why I would... How many people believe that Matthew is still alive? Yeah, I, I think you're still alive. I would save you if you weren't alive. But if not, I would have to say, David? Yeah. We love I can't say that I would say either of these two because I killed them and I wouldn't be the hero. In the yeah, there you go. Um, and for me, it would be Randy and then Dewey. Yeah. yeah. It was so painful to watch Dewey, though. That was rough. Shout out to David Arquette and Courtney Cox. Obviously, a part of the Scrooge family. So good. Awesome. What about Kenny the Camera Guy? I've always had a soft spot for Kenny the Camera Guy. Bro, W. Brown. Yeah. <laughs> All right, thank you for your question. Thank you. Hey everybody, we are almost out of time. I think we have time for uh, maybe two more questions. Yeah, let's go right here. We ain't leaving. Hello. Hi. Um, I know you guys are like from a movie where a person literally murders people, but what's your favorite Pokemon? <laughs> what Pokemon are you? You. That is my favorite. Mine too. It's Roy Mimikyu, everybody. Yeah. Yes, he is. He is. He is a good Pokemon. Yeah. Yes, he is. Awesome. Thank you for your question. Thank you, Mimikyu. <laughs> Two more. Here we go. Hi, I'm Liv. Um, I'm a huge fan of Scream, but I'm also a huge fan of Riverdale, and I was wondering. <laughs> What was it like um, moving from a serial killer to a dad? <laughs> You're obviously not a parent. It's so close. <laughs> Almost the same thing. Um, I, you know, I, I, the, yeah. I mean, I became a dad in real life, well before, I, and I, you know, in Riverdale. But um, I, I love that cast. Um, you know. Uh, Cole Sprouse is a dear friend of mine now. Um, one of you know the sweetest, smartest, kindest people. Um, yeah, I was. I, I miss those guys. I, um, in terms of playing it, I don't know. I've been. I had been a dad for 15 years at the point I started that role, so it didn't feel that much of a stretch. 
uh, what was a stretch was I, I like to think of myself as a really good dad and he was not a good dad at all. Um, so that was kind of fun to let those demons out a little bit. But, uh, <laughs> but thank you. Thank can you so I, much. Can I just add on to that? I think that uh, Skeet's not a dad. He's everybody's daddy. No! Okay. You love it. Somehow I knew that was coming. <laughs> Okay. All I know is on Father's Day, my, my daughter writes, Dear Father. <laughs> <laughs> well, you can't write Dear Daddy. <laughs> Thanks to people like you. <laughs> I didn't say Zaddy. <laughs> this got weird. <laughs> Next question. Yep. We'll do our final question here. We got a beautiful uh, ghost face back there. Let's go. Tell us your name and your question. Uh, my name is Juliet, uh, and my question is: If there was like anybody whose like death you would want to be, because there's like a lot of cool deaths, which death would you rather have? I guess. Ooh, yeah. Or I guess maybe a favorite kill. That's always a good hard question. Tatum. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Such a good kill. I've always wondered what it'd be like to go th through a garage <laughs> door over. <laughs> <laughs> That's really weird. <laughs> one, more, one more question. Favorite kills? Yeah, well, I was going to say, we've got a ton of fans out here, um, 3,000 plus people um, that have lived and grown up with you, so many young generations that are now discovering this. I'd love if each one of you just kind of went down and just said, you know, how the fans mean to you um, and all the folks uh, that are here uh, to just be in your presence and, you know, honor the films uh, that you created. Do you have any final words uh, for the fans? First of all, thank you for your question. We were not, like, yeah, yeah, throwing that again. aside. Yeah. Thank you so much. <laughs> um, God, I, I, it's hard to express, to be honest. Um, you know, people outside of this world who, you know, or, or even actors who don't really necessarily know, you know, what we're doing here this weekend, can't understand the energy exchange that happens between us and you. Um, I know we all do our best to give you our undivided attention at the table, to feel a part of your life for whatever brief moments we get. But the gratitude that we have for you is, is limitless. I mean, we talk about it all the time. And uh, I'm incredibly grateful for you guys. You, you know, we're at a time in our business right now that the future is a bit uncertain, and to be honest, it's always uncertain. We're in a job where we don't know how much we'll make in a year, typically, and sometimes it's zero. Um, so for you to come out here, to take the time to spend your hard-earned money on something, to be quite honest, that for most of our careers we gave a, give away, you know, because we're grateful as it is, uh, it means the world to us. It does feed our families. It does more than you can imagine. So it's not taken with a grain of salt. It is deeply inside of us how grateful we, we are for each and every one of you. Yeah. yeah, I just I just add to that. I mean, I can't really add much more to that. It's, it's 100% correct, and it's just the amount of just you guys are just voracious with your love and you believe in us and you and it's just look at look at this yeah. this is 27 years later and you brought i mean the energy is incredible every time i get somebody in my line from older to younger i'm absolutely amazed and i'm just lucky to be a part of it and i just want to say thank you and it's like you brought us back together we've become like closer little knit family awesome. and that's because of you and now we're all one family yeah. so i want to say thank you yeah i mean all, all of that we don't exist without you guys mm -hmm. you know there is no art unless it's witnessed um you know when you're doing theater you you get a sense of an audience and what they're getting from from what you're creating and in film and television you don't get that sense unless you do something like this um, and it, when I started doing these I really got a very clear sense of the impact these movies have had and, and the, my character has had and how much it can mean to to people um, 
at a level that you know is really really hard to comprehend and and you know for me I'm an artist because I want to touch people I want to communicate I want to feel you I want you to feel me I want to understand I want to story tell we the world gets closer as we share our stories um, we understand each other better perhaps we can be more peaceful <laughs> with understanding and um, sorry I'm gonna cry I love you guys yeah. Woo! special because I think that we care deeply and I don't think that I think it's hard in Hollywood sometimes to show how much you appreciate to because there is this sense of like everything's always perfect for us that we live in this social media world where you assume our lives are pitch perfect and they're not we go up and we go down we have complications and I think one of the things about this cast that continually amazes me is that their ability and uh, to express honest gratitude, and so I have nothing to add other than I'm grateful yeah. to be with you guys. Amazing. Well, Fan Expo Denver Show has passed your appreciation. Woo! One more time, you pass up screen. I should have heard Jamie Kelly, Steve Ulrich, Matthew Lillard, and Matt Yeah!